Hello everyone and welcome back to my Let's Play of Hive Spot Friend Sim. Last time we met Chahut, our first purple blood friend. Anyway, we went to Clown Church with her and in the bad ending she straight up murdered us. But in the good ending, the um, who I think was the Grand High Blood actually came up on the screen and talked to us for a bit. And like, saw that since we had somehow managed to survive on Eternia that Chahut should like, learn from us before she has to go through the ordeals and leave the planet, so... Things turned out surprisingly well in that ending. We made friends with a murderous clown who doesn't want to kill us, at least in that ending she doesn't, so I'll call that a success. Anyway, got a new pair of trolls today. Who are they? Um, Volume 10 of Faraway Lands and Nearby Pals. Okay, this is, I, I remember, like, um, I think this person, uh, how do I word this? Back uh, when, uh, before the first act of Hive Swap came out, they released, like, some models of other characters or something, and I feel like this guy was one of them. Like, this person is, like, a beekeeper or something, maybe? And I guess this is another teal blood over here. They look like they have a sword. They look kind of like a ninja, really. <laughs> Oh, faraway lands. I wonder if that's like, um, what do they call it? Eastern Alternia? Alternia Asia? I don't know. Fake Japan. <laughs> anyway. You've been lucky enough to acquire a bounty of friendship since you arrived on this planet. But there's still an emptiness nestled right in the crook of your heart's atria. Maybe making one more friend will fix it. Maybe this next one will expand inside your chest like a sponge in a bath. Pushing out all your sadness, loneliness, and insecurity. After all, number 20 is the charm. Oh, jeez, is that like a JoJo thing? I have not actually watched or read JoJo's Bizarre Adventure yet, but I plan to in the future. So if there's any references to that, I'm probably going to miss them, sorry. But I, get, I, I recognize the art style. And you, you are an adorable little puffball, aren't you? Zebedee? Zebedee Tongva. You look like a fun person. Okay. Tonight you're abuzz with excitement. Wait, no, your palm husk is vibrating in your pocket. One of your friends is contacting you. You pulled out and a notification pops up. Zzz, buzzing zzz, is requesting to add you on chitter. The message accompanied by a little icon, blue with a silhouetted winged animal. Some of the similarities between this planet and your own are starting to stretch your powers of disbelief and coincidence. I mean, powers of belief and coincidence. Whatever. You pull up the app and read the messages from, could it be, your potential new friend. OMG, hi! I hope it's okay to contact you. Oops, I should have in I should introduce myself. <laughs> I saw your picture on Sarava's stream. I'm one of their biggest fans. But now I'm one of yours. Love those looks. Anyway, I would love to chat if you're open to it. If not, it's okay, you can just ignore me. <laughs> Everyone else does. Could this be the universe reaching benevolently out to, down to do you a solid? It's like being given a giant pile of money unasked. I, I love ZBD already, go say. You didn't have to do anything for this friendship. You didn't even have to walk anywhere. All you had to do was join the fabled social media and it literally appeared in your pocket. Your hands are shaking a little as you go to respond. You don't want to seem too eager. Or do you? You have no idea how to approach this. You thank Zbuzzings for his compliments and say that you'd be happy to talk sometime. In an instance, a notification pops up inviting you to download another app. Oh, he's so cute. Hello. I think that's a he. Sorry. Yes, he. You do it and a video screen opens. Suddenly you can see your new friend's face. He's sweetly round and roly-poly and smiling at you broadly. Hi! I'm Zebedi. I hope it's not too sudden to gripe you like this. Is it okay? OMG, you don't have to respond to that. Sorry for being weird. Let's start over, okay? <laughs> How do you know Sarava? Apart from being extremely friendly, this troll also seems to run both sides of the conversation by himself. Befriending him is the least effort you've ever put into anything. His enthusiasm is really cute, but there's something about him that unsettles you. Looking at his hopeful face gives you a dark stub of humiliation you don't quite understand. You swallow down the discomfort and tell him the story of your friendship with Sarava, leaving out Sarava's personal background. He hangs on your every word. That's so cool! I wish I could hang out with you guys. OMG, not that I'm implying you'd want to hang out. It's just... No one ever comes to visit me. 
He takes out his phone and taps a few keys. A notification box, box pops up in front of the video. It's a direct message from Zzz Buzzing Zzz that just says, hmm. You ask him why that is. I live in the middle of nowhere. It's good for the bees. But I guess no one really thinks it's worth the effort to come all the way out here. It's just me and my looses. And he can't really do much around the hive. <sighs> is fine. He re oh, he really says the word sigh out loud. Despite saying it was fine, he seems dejected with a distinct downward angle to his shoulders. Sorry, his shoulders. His buzzy accent is kind of getting to you. Ask more about where he lives. Show interest in him. You say it must be nice to live in the countryside. You mentioned that you did get to see some, some of rural Alternia when you met Skyla, and it seemed beautiful. Zebedee's face twists into a grimace. Yeah, I guess. Sensing this is a moment for, for sympathy, you tell him you're sure his friends would come visit if they were able to make the trek. Sure. It sounds like you did visit another troll that lives in the countryside, though. So I guess you thought she was cooler than me. No, dude, I didn't know you at the time. We literally just met. That's like, it's whatever. I don't need my friends to pick me first. You struggle for words. You want to reassure him, but you also don't know him that well yet. You weakly protest that you didn't mean to say Skyla was cooler than him. You didn't even know him then. Maybe you'll be able to visit him in the future too. Yeah, maybe. I've heard that before. He's not rejecting you, but you get the sense that a wall has been raised. You're sure you're going to keep chatting with Zebedee from time to time, but you get the sense that you're never going to become a true friend. You're stuck in acquaintanceship limbo. Looks like you failed to earn his trust. Welp. Ah, that stings. Uh. Well, we got the short bad ending out of the way. I can see where the problems with this character lies. Namely, he's... I don't know how to describe it. He's kind of like passive-aggressive, almost. Mm. Like he's one of the people's like, oh, it's fine, it's fine, but really he's like mad that you're not doing something about it, kind of. Ask him if it's really fine. You tell him that you'd understand if he's not okay with it. After all, you say, it would really hurt your feelings if your friends didn't make any effort for you. Isn't that what friends are supposed to do? He gives you a grateful smile, some tension releasing from his frame. Oh, I would never ask that of anyone. I don't want to be annoying. Like, sometimes I really wish someone would take the time to visit. But I totally don't blame any of my friends for not coming. Like, I understand that you have to decide which friends come first. And I just don't. Some people are just cooler and more fun than me. It's understandable. This really must be your lucky day. First of all, no one has threatened bodily violence towards you in the past 10 minutes. Your fear for your life is at is a, a low-key, reasonable level. Second, this troll's making it really obvious what he wants you to do. This is a total slam dunk of friend opportunity. Say you'll visit. Zebedee's face transforms utterly. It's astonishing. He goes from sullen and shadows to utterly radiant. Your heart pangs with an overwhelming surge of fellow feeling. True, you've seen other trolls react emotively at the sight of meat and blood and your own body sparkling under the moonlight, but Zebedee is the only one with such an extreme reaction to friendship. Man, you are really feeling this little guy. You'll come? Really? That's so cool! Thanks! This is gonna be so good! I'm gonna get all the best snacks and my Lucis is really cool, you'll like him. This is so exciting! You leave Zebedee to his preparations, even as the bubble of joy inside you goes a little wobbly. You aren't used to such high expectations from prospective friends. Mostly people just expect you to be an imbecile. You absolutely can't screw this up. You made a promise to your brand new friend. Unfortunately, that promise is to visit him in a house that is, by his own admission, so far away that not even people who know where the fuck it is can go on... N who on that night? Mm, sorry. Not even people who know what the fuck is going on can be asked to find it. You haven't thought this through, but that's never stopped you before. First things first. What old friendships can you call in to help you out, i.e. who is likely to have a vehicle of some kind? You can always call up Tagore to, to, to see what he thinks, but you don't want to be too needy with him. Amnesia, well, doesn't look tall enough to reach the pedals. Zebra, just no. Hey, that's why I put in my video description. Thanks. You are a strong, independent alien who don't need no troll. Um, who could we call? Let me think about this for a minute. I mean, our daughter might have a car, but I really don't want to visit her. Um, probably not Tizia. She's busy studying. I mean, I guess we could check with Sarava, because, I mean, apparently Zebedee knows them, so... I don't know. You also don't think aliens are allowed on public transport, and you don't know the number for troll taxis. 
So you'll do crime. Perfect. Hmm, what did Connie do when she stole the car? Punch the lock off with one big fist. You won't be punching off any doors, but eventually you find a car that isn't locked. Almost like someone helpfully left it for you. Haha, <laughs> sucker. Okay, so we literally just stole a car. Okay, then. It pricks slightly your conscience, and as you slide into the seat and fire up the autopilot, heading out to the country once again. But recently, anything that isn't brutal and discriminant violence kind of doesn't phase you. So you stole a car. Big deal. It's not like anyone died. This is it. So begins your gradual slide into total moral iniquity. A hardened criminal. That's you. Zebedee does live pretty far out. He hasn't been exaggerating. He used the time to curl up in the back seat and catch up on some sleep, all the while trying to ignore the fact that the car reminds you of being inside a large squishy animal. At least you get a few radio channels out here. There he is! Zebedee's hive is big and buzzing. Literally. You can hear a persistent drone of bees, and standing right outside is the boy himself. He's so excited that he's bouncing on his toes, clapping his hands together. He has a gold symbol on his shirt. You wonder if he's a psychic. You finally been in here long enough to pick up on racial stereotypes. Go you. You're here! You actually came! I seriously can't believe that somebody actually went out of their way to visit me! Well, you don't really have a way to go out of, but you keep that to yourself. You're more than happy to accept the friendship points. Hello, new friend. Oh, is that- I love your little- is that like a bee salt shaker or something? It's so cute. Zebedee leads you into his hive, which, like Skyla's, looks like he made a lot of it himself. There are hanging baskets of flowers and plants everywhere, and a zigzag shelf holding up a stack of colorful books. In one corner is a big screen TV and an entertainment center. Zebedee vanishes into another room and leaves you to get comfortable on the big couch, which is unsubtly striped yellow and black. The buzzing is pretty loud in here, too, and you look around for bees. You're not thrilled about the bees, honestly. You wish there was some music on your phone to drown them out. You're thinking about following Zebedee and seeing if he needs help, when your phone starts to vibrate. You look down and recognize Sarava's username. Um... Ah... Uh, I want to answer Sarava, but I don't want Zebedee to feel like we're ignoring him. So... Let it go to voicemail? You decide to just let the call go to voicemail. You're busy with a different friend right now, and you can just call them back on your way home. Or not home, but the closest you've got right now. It'll give you something to do besides sleep. You mess around on your phone for a little bit, filling out your profile on your chitter. Ill an invasion of one. Just here, I guess. That's also the best you can come up with. You aren't quite sure how your age would translate to troll years. Sweeps? So you don't bother with that. You've already gained some more followers. Sarava re retweeted your intro treat, tweet, or chirp, whatever. Zebedee comes back in with a tray of snacks and two glasses of something bright red that you hope isn't Fago. Or blood, but that goes without saying at this point. Hey, who are you talking to? I heard your palm husk go off. You tell him that you weren't talking to anybody. You let the call go to voicemail. Does he really think you're the kind of person who would take a call from someone else while you're having a hangout? Hang sesh? Heck no. Oh, you didn't have to do that. Zebedee says that, but he's obviously incredibly happy that you did. Hey, I made the right choice. He sets the tray down and hops up on the couch next to you. So, what do you want to do? I have a bunch of really cool stuff we could check out, but I didn't want to make you just do whatever I wanted. I know we barely know each other. <laughs> you tell him that you aren't, that whatever he wants to do is fine with you. You aren't picky in any sense of the word. Zebedee seems a little at sea by your lack of an opinion, but eventually he puts on the first episode of a pirate show. This is nice. It's nice to just chill for a little while. But you barely get through the opening credits before Zebedee changes his mind and puts on a show about space pirates instead. But then he gives up on that too. He keeps looking at you for input, but the extent of your experience with troll pop culture is R Ramel's r knockoffs in that one shitty romance flick, Polly Patikusi. You're not informed enough to have an opinion. You are seriously down for whatever. Zebedee does the same thing with video games for a while, becoming increasingly more distressed. You feel deep empathy at his plight, but also mild annoyance. You understand this unreasonable fear of beefing it in front of your friends. You feel like that pretty much all the time. He eventually suggests to Zebedee that you could just watch the last thing he watched on Grubtube. Zebedee goes a delicate gray color that you've come to realize is the troll version of a Blanche. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we could do that for sure, but you know a guy's Grubtube cue is, you know, kinda personal? Not that I don't trust you. If you can't trust randos you met online and invited to your house, who can you trust, right? You feel that way too. You've also felt the overwhelming urge to throw yourself into the arms of strangers since you crash landed down here. You tell Zebedee that you aren't going to judge him. You don't judge your friends. An overwhelming look of trembling gratitude comes over him, and once again you feel an uncomfortable pulse of empathy. You're used to being the desperate one. You aren't sure how you feel about this turnabout, all this social power. Okay. The two of you scroll down through the history of his grubtube account, and you find yourself choked up by the incredible trust he's showing you, in, showing in you right now. 
Playing someone behind the curtain. There doesn't seem to be anything worth getting stressed over. No porn or anything. He does have a lot of videos of Sarava, specifically ones where they're actually on camera. Do you have a crush? That'd be really cute. Ah, uh, yeah, they are so cool! It's so rad that you guys are tight. I really want to meet them someday. He sighs. Then he sighs again a little louder. You catch on to your part in this and tell him that you can probably figure out a way to make that happen. You hope you don't have to follow through on that. Sarava's a busy guy and you aren't sure they actually let anyone to into their hive. Well, besides you. But you seem to be the exception to a number of rules. Keep that last part to yourself. The rest of the videos and his recent history are about a band called Hatch to Dance. Music videos, interviews, and compilations of vlogs. You ask him what all this is. You've never heard of H2D? Really? They're so cool. They're my fave. I mean... He gets shifty-eyed. I mean, whatever. They're alright, I guess. <laughs> Their music is kind of catchy and they have a pretty dope group dynamic. You mentioned that all of them seem to be pretty good looking, too. <laughs> really? You think so? You point out a guy with tall horns that swoosh into hooks and a lot of white hair that falls into his eyes. This guy is particularly handsome. Him? I mean, he's okay, I guess. If you're really basic. Not that I think you're basic or anything. He shows you some of the music videos. They have a really high production values and extremely elaborate sets. All the band members seeing and dancing get very close to kissing each other. Oh boy. <laughs> He'd been really nervous about showing you this. His deep, dark secret was that he likes music videos? Is being into pretty pop stars some kind of cultural taboo? Uh, not really, just... <laughs> it's kind of lame, right? And I just really want you to like me. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. And you do like him. You just wish he wouldn't say shit like that. It's embarrassing. And also it reminds you that you yourself have gone around doing pretty much the same thing. Pret pretending to agree with everything your prospective friends say, lying, saying you're into things you aren't. Just all around being a big phony. The circumstances are different for you though. You're an alien. This is a hostile territory. You don't have a hive or a lucis or even horns. So it's way less path pathetic for you to be like this than it is for Zebedee, right? Deep down, you know you're full of shit. You're just coming up with reasons to excuse behavior in yourself that you condemn in others. <clears throat> You hang your head in shame. Zebedee, who is not privy to your internal monologue, looks confused. Is it possible that you're doing the wrong thing in your eternal quest for friends? Could it be that- Before you can spiral any further into a full-blown existential crisis, you hear a noise from outside that you really, really don't like. Several noises, in fact. A crash followed by a thump. Followed by a get out of here, you fucking piece of shit! You thief! Oh dear. Zebedee scrambles around to look over the back of the couch. You can just make out a shape through the window. Hey, this is a totally wild question that I typically would never ask a potential friend, but oh crap, it's the first news car we stole. Did you steal that scuttle buggy? Uh, funny story. You didn't know how else to get out here. You did it for him, for your nascent friendship. Oh wow, nobody's ever stolen a scuttle buggy from me before. <laughs> did you forget to take the GPS chip out though? Because I think whoever you stole it from found it. GPS chip. Right. Fuck. This is not an auspicious start to your life of crime. Maybe you aren't quite ready to go it alone yet. Another crash and rattle. It sounds like someone is taking pieces of ZBD's hive. You get up and start for the door. Hey, um, what are you doing? You can't go out there. They look big. And they sound huge. You'll get killed. Right, he's definitely got a point there. But whoever is outside seems intent on demolishing his hive brick by brick, so they're gonna get in eventually anyway. Better for you to go out there now and face the music so at least one of you gets out of this. ZBD stares at you. Weird globby golden tears pull at the corner of his eyes. I just had a thought. What if it was Sarava's car that we stole and that's why they were texting us or whatever? You- you would do that? For me? Nobody's ever offered to die for me before. That's so nice. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty nice and also pretty idiotic concerning you're about to go give yourself up to a big angry troll whose car you absolutely stole. No, it wouldn't be Sarava because, um... Zebedee said they could see them, and they would have recognized Sarava for sure. Well, it's been fun while it lasted. Actually, it's been mostly terrible. Oh well. Goodbye, cruel world. Wait! You have one hand against on the doorknob while Zebedee's shout rings against the walls and ceiling. No one is touching my new friend! Outside, the buzzing rises to a rattling crescendo, so loud it no longer sounds like animals. It sounds like weather or a fighter jet. The intruder, intruder screams. You wince, but you're also overwhelmed by gratitude and excitement. Zebedee did that. For you. The screams stop after a few seconds and the buzzing gradually recedes. You and ZBD are left staring at the door, then at each other. Behind you, GrubTube is auto-playing an H2D interview. Little ambient crackles of the white electricity you've come to associate with psychics wreath ZBD before that fades too. Did he seriously just telekinetically gra gather up- They misspelled telekinetically. Tele telekintally? 
Tickly? What? Gather up a bunch of bees and throw them? Um, no. That sounds hard and potentially dangerous for the bees. I more just ask them nicely. I'm bad at it, though. Sometimes it doesn't work. Well, it sure worked this time. Yeah. Zebedee nods, then he nods again. Yeah, that was pretty cool, right? The two of you venture outside to see what's going on. Nothing is going on. The night is quiet. The car is exactly where you left it, and there's no sign of the bees or the intruder. So either the... So either they ran away or got stung so many times they dissolved into sludge. You feel another pang of conscience, but it's not enough to cover up your ecstatic surge of happiness when you see how chuffed Zebedee is to have set some bees on a guy. You tell him that you're grateful. You think about adding that you're proud of him, but you don't want to literally make him explode. You let him hug you instead. Guess this means you have a scuttle buggy now? Yeah, spoils of war! You want some buttery exploded kernels? Yeah, I want some popcorn. I make them myself. Well, I put the kernels in a pot and explode them. You tell him that sounds great. He's honestly pretty fun to visit. My nice is an attack. You're having a really nice time, and that part was honestly entirely your fault. He should quit putting himself down so much and being such a desperate piece of shit. You mean that, you mean that in the nicest way possible. Yeah, it's pretty good advice in general. You know, just to have floating around out there. Woo! Finally, we can be friends! It's cool. He's pretty nice. Also, that's our first uh, Violet Blood right there. Hello. I'm guessing that's H2D. Nice. Alrighty, um... And we're going to answer it. We're going to talk to Sarava and probably make Zebedi incredibly jealous. Might as well. You have no idea how long Zebedi is going to be in there. And if there's anyone who's with music, it's this troll. Oh, jeez. What was... What was Sarava's voice? I think it was pretty much my normal voice. <laughs> hey, dude. What's up? Can't believe it took you this long to get a chitter, LMAO. Damn, you're like really lost without my help, huh? Looks like you only got two followers, though, LMAO. You can feel some nameless tension in, your, in you bleed away at the soft thump of lo-fi chill-hot beats murmuring softly th through Sarava's mic. If only you could just go spend time with your cool friends and stop making new ones. But even the thought makes your stomach r ring itself out like a washcloth. There's no point wishing for things to be different from how they are. You'd do anything for your new friends. Anything. You ask them if they have any chitter advice. You know, on how to be a cool guy online. I mean, you definitely came to the right troll. But I don't know if I should be managing your brand more than I already did. It's just risky for me, you know? It's hard enough maintaining my image as it is. Other streamers are always on my bulge, LMAO. Doesn't mean we can't hang, though. I mean, it was really chill last time. Also, I need my clothes back. You assure Sarava that you definitely still have their clothes and that you totally did not destroy them in an epic battle to save a giant collie. That's cool, no worries or anything. I was wondering if you wanted to hang out today. If not, it's chill, I got all sorts of shit I can get up to, LMAO. You know how it is. But yeah, let me know. Oh well, how'd you suddenly become so popular? Maybe this is what happens when you finally get online. Not only are you hanging out with one, your one friend, but you got another one clamoring for your attention. Social media is amazing. You tell Sarava you would love to chill, but you're currently out in the middle of nowhere hanging out with someone else. Maybe Sarava's heard of him? ZBD Tongva? Surely everyone on the internet knows each other. Um, I don't know him? Sorry, lol. You spell out ZBD's chitter handle. Sarava's face is a complicated dance between shock, worry, and wry amusement. Oh dang, LMAO. What are the odds? Small internet. So Sarava does know him. I mean, I know of him. Man, awkward. Are you guys tight though? You tell Sarava that you aren't tight yet. Pretty loose, but you're working on it. Which is why you're currently in the middle of nowhere sitting on this bee-themed couch. Sarava sketch tr scratches awkwardly between their horns. Is that like what you go online to do? That whole scene? Scene? The only scene you know about is the friendship scene, and possibly the clown scene, and the meat scene. Actually, you may be in more scenes than you give yourself credit for. And you get the feeling you are right on the edge of another one. You can taste it, and it makes your stomach growl. You tell Sarava whatever the scene is, you're definitely not part of it. You don't even know what they're talking about, so what are they talking about? Not to, like, talk shit or whatever, because God knows golds who live in a glass hive of tenuously curated online social interactions shouldn't throw stones or whatever. Fuck knows I got up to some shit back in the day. But you maybe shouldn't hang out with this dude. Especially when you're like, right on the edge of breaking out yourself. I mean, you have to be careful with this shit. I told you what happened to me, internet fame isn't a joke. They gesture vaguely towards their missing eye. Here, let me just link you. A link pops up in the gripe chat box. 
You follow it to what appears to be a fanfiction account. Nothing wrong with a little fanfiction. You've never been much of a writer yourself, but you're pretty pro anything doing whatever they feel like as long as it's not gruesome murder. Same! You're a real ch chill dude that way. I mean, right, yeah, same. LMAO. I'm not trying to judge or whatever, but... You'll see what I mean. Scroll down. You scroll past the first few pages. Most of these seem to be some band that you've never heard of, and then almost at the end you find... Oh. Oh. Oh, damn. This appears to be a fanfic about Sarava. You don't click through. You kind of get the idea from the tags. Well, Sarava is a big deal after all. You guess it makes sense that people would include them in their, uh, fantasies. You do it all the time, in a friend way. Yeah, you get what I'm saying th now, though. I mean, live your dreams, right, Elmeo? Any guy on the internet can write whatever he wants to about me, but, like, I don't want to see it. Just a heads up, you know. You get how that could be a little awkward. You tell Sarava that you'll be careful of your infant internet fame. Though, you doubt anyone would ever will ever write anything about you. Who'd want to read about your dumb fuck exploits? I know, right? Yeah, Elmo. Come over whenever I'll smoke you up. Great, more bug ass. You end your call with Sarava and navigate back over to ZBD's fanfiction account. You pick one of the ones that's not about Sarava, one of the teen rated ones. You don't have anything against erotica, but uh, maybe you'll save it for later, when you're alone, in privacy. You don't know any of these characters and the context is doubly indecipherable. The troll music business. But if this really is Zebedee's writing, he's pretty good. You have such talented friends. Hey! Sorry I took so long. Shit, Zebedee sneaks up on you from behind. You, you quickly lock your phone, but apparently not quickly enough. You- how did you find this? Oh god, you went searching for me? That's- I thought we were friends! But of course you're friends. Friends don't, don't go digging through each other's shit. I would've showed you my fic if you just asked. You tell me that you absolutely did not go looking for it. Sarava gave it to you. When they called you up, just now. Zebedee's face closes down. Is it just you, or has the sound of bees gotten louder? Oh, right. So your cool friend Sarava told you. I see how it is. No, they just called you. You just answered the phone. No, it's fine. I totally get it. <laughs> even coming all the way out here, I'm still not a priority. It's fine. It's not even a big deal. I'm totally used to it. You and Sarava. What are you, mate spritz? You're absolutely not made spritz with Sarava. You are not made spritz with anyone as far as you know. Fuck, having so many friends is exhausting. Oh, really? Like, your life is so great, I get it. You have just so many friends and you're so popular and everybody wants to spend time with you. Zebedee is crying and not trying to hide it. It's very sad and extremely awkward. You feel terrible. Also like kind of a dickhead. You're always doing all this complaining about your lot in life, when to tell you the truth, you've actually got a lot going for you. You have all these amazing friends who go out of their way to check up on you and ask if you if you want to hang out. Of course, all that complaining is just in your internal monologue. It's not like anyone can hear your thoughts. Thank God for that. Well, I'm so glad that you and Sarava have each other. Maybe you can go hang out with them and make fun of me some more. You try to tell Zebedee that you're absolutely not making fun of him. You're just curious about his hobbies and interests. You absolutely want to read his fanfiction. But the kid isn't listening anymore. Fuck, you hope the car has enough gas to get you back to civilization. Awkward. Oh, so that's what scuttle buggies look like. Well, I'm sorry, ZBD. Also, I know from the um, the few screenshots we have of Hive Swap Act Two that we're going to meet ZBD in there. So, cause I, I remember seeing him in his beehives. So that's gonna be cool. I was actually checking out the Hive Swap Act 2 uh, Steam page earlier today. It's been on my wish list since, basically since I put it up. And I also saw, I think it was Follicle and her Lucis. I think I saw them somewhere, so. Uh, oh, and um, crap, what's his name? How'd I forget it? The, the pilot troll, the one who wants to fly airplanes. I saw him too. Uh, why'd I forget his name? There's too many names in here. I'm going to forget some of them. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that whenever it comes out. Uh, anyway, Zebedee. I... I have mixed feelings about him. When he's happy, I like him. When he starts getting all jealous and like self-pitying, I don't like him, so... Mixed feelings. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye! Wait, no! I'm sorry, I forgot! I'm sorry! RPF, real pro friend. You stand hatched to dance. I was about to start a rant on the word stand, but I'll save that for another time. Anyway, bye.